Hello everyone, welcome to this tutorial on percentiles and quartiles. What is a percentile? Formally speaking, the definition of a percentile is a measure used to indicate the value below which a given percentage of observations fall. Let's call this P, or P percent. The values above this number would then be 100 minus P, or 100 minus P percent. For example, the 90th percentile is the value or score below which 90% of the observations are found. So if your score on a test is in the 90th percentile, that means 90% of the grades were lower than yours, or to put it another way, you did better than 90% of those who took the test. And 10% did better than you. We will use the letter P to represent percentile. So let's say we had a sample of 15 student grades. The 90th percentile would divide the grades into two parts. 90% of the grades would be below that percentile, and 10% of the grades would be above that percentile. Okay, let's look at an example with 15 student grades and calculate the 70th percentile for those grades. Now the first thing we need to do, just as we did when calculating the median, is to put all of these numbers in order from smallest to largest. So let's see how we would calculate the 70th percentile. Okay, so let's start first by rearranging these 15 numbers from smallest to largest. Okay, as I write each number down, I'm going to cross it off. Okay, so I wrote all the numbers down, uh, rearranged all the numbers from smallest to largest. We have 55 at the lowest end and 98 at the highest end. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is to put a location number under each of these numbers. So let's separate each of these numbers so it's easier to see. Okay, and I'm going to give the location location 1, location 2, location 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Okay, so now I've marked from smallest to largest the location numbers. To calculate the pth percentile, the formula is L subscript P is equal to P over 100 times n plus 1. So for this example, I want to find the 70th percentile. So I do L subscript 70, and that would be 70 over 100. And there are 15 numbers, so n is equal to 15 plus 1. And that would be equal to 0 0.7 times 15 plus 1 is 16. If you use a calculator, you get 11.2. It's important to understand that 11.2 is not the 70th percentile, but rather the location of where the 70th percentile would be. So the 70th percentile would be someplace just above the 11th value. This value, 11.2, is the location. Okay, so it's important to understand 11.2 is the location of the 70th percentile. So that would be somewhere between the 11th and the 12th number. 11.2 is uh, location. If it was 11.5, it would be 50% of the way between 11 and 12. And we saw with the median, what you do is you add the two numbers and you divide by 2 to get the halfway point. But this is 11.2, so it's 20% of the way between the 11th value and the 12th value. It so happens in this example that both the 11th value and the 12th value are 84, so obviously the 11.2th value or location is 84. But how would we do it uh, if it was 84 and let's say 92? 
So let's say the, the 11th value was 84 and the 12th value was 92. Then what would we do? What we would do is we would say the 70th percentile is the value between the 11th plus 0.2 percent of the difference between the 12th value and the 11th value. Let me first do it for this example to show you. We would say that it is 84 plus 0.2 of the difference between the 12th and the 11th value. So 0.2 of the difference between the 12th value and the 11th value. And the 12th value is 84, and the 11th value is 84, so it is 84 plus 0.2 of the difference, which is 0, so it is 84. So the 70th percentile is equal to 84. Okay, now, just for illustration purposes, let's say the 11th number is 84, but let's say the 12th number was 92. Okay, it isn't in this example, but let's say it was, and we get a, lo a location, and we get a location of 11.2. How would we calculate the 11.2th position? So we always know how to do the 11.5th number. We would take the two numbers, add them, and divide in half. So that means the 50% mark. Well, in this case, it's 0.2, so it's the 20% mark. So what we would do is the same thing we did above, but let's do it for 84 plus 0.2 of the difference of the 12th number and the 11th number. And in this case, we're saying, let's make the 12th number 92 and the 11th number 84, okay? And in this case, if the 12th number was 92, 92 minus 84 would give us 84 plus 0.2 times the difference is 8. And so that would be 84 plus 1.6. And so that would give us 85.6. Okay. And so that would be the 70th percent centile. 70th percentile. Okay, here we have our example again with the students' grades, and we put the numbers in order from smallest to largest. So 55 is the smallest number, and 98 is the largest number. So we put the numbers into an ordered array. Now remember the formula is L subscript P. P being the percentile that we're looking for, is equal to P over 100 times N plus 1. So what is N? N is equal to the number of observations we have. We have 15 observations, so N is equal to 15. Okay, let's say we want to calculate the 50th percentile, which is also the median. So using the formula, L subscript P, we would put in L subscript 50, is equal to 50 over 100 times 15 plus 1. So N is 15, N plus 1, 15 plus 1. So we get 0.5 times 16, and 0.5 times 16 is 8. Now, 8 is not the median, 8 is not the 50th percentile, 8 is the location of where the number is for the 50th percentile. So we have to go back to the ordered array and look for the eighth value. So we count to the eighth value, and we get the eighth value as 77. So the 50th percentile, or the median, is equal to 77. This is the point where 50% of the values are below and 50% are above this number. We can also split the data into four parts, with each part representing 25% of the data. When the data is split into fourths, the parts are called quartiles. So let's think about this. If one number, the median, splits the data into two parts with 50% of the values below and 50% above, then how many values do we need to split the data into four parts? All right, let's take a look at this. Here's the data from the smallest number to the largest number. Okay, so if we split the data in half like that, 
with 50% of the data on one side and 50% on the other side, then we just need one number, the median. How many numbers do we need to split the data into quarters? Let's take a look at this. To split the data into four parts, we would do this. How many numbers do we need to split the data into four parts? And the answer is three. Let's call them Q1, Q2, and Q3. We would split each of the halves in half to get quarters, and now each section represents 25% of the data values. The division points between each quarter are referred to as quartiles and are defined as follows. Q1 is the first quartile, or 25th percentile. Q2 is the second quartile, or the 50th percentile. And Q3 is the third quartile. And which percentile would that be? That would be the 75th percentile. Q1 is the first quartile, or the 25th percentile. Q2 is the second quartile, or the 50th percentile, also known as the median. And Q3 is the third quartile, or the 75th percentile. To calculate these quartiles, we can use the percentile formula since quartiles are just specific percentiles. So for Q1, let's write out the formula. So for Q1, we use the formula L subscript P, P is the 25th percentile, so L subscript 25 is equal to 25 divided by 100 times N plus 1, so 15 plus 1, is equal to 0.25 times 16, which is equal to 4. And it's not 4, but it's the fourth value. Let's scroll up to the ordered array and take a look at the fourth value. And we can see that the fourth value is 69. So Q1 is equal to 69. Q2 we already calculated as the 50th percentile or the median, and we got 77. All right, let's calculate Q3. L subscript 75 is equal to 75 over 100 times N plus 1 is equal to 0.75 times 16, 0.75 times 16, which is 12. And again, that's 12, but it's not 12, it's the 12th value. So let's scroll back up and see what the 12th value is. And so the 12th value would be 84. As long as we're talking about quartiles, we can discuss a measure of dispersion called the interquartile range. This number gives us the spread of the middle 50% of the data values. Here is the formula. IQR, interquartile range, is equal to Q3 minus Q1. For our example, Q3 is 84 and Q1 is 69. To get the interquartile range for our example, we would take Q3, which is 84, minus Q1, which is 69, and we get 15. This number is sometimes called the middle 50, and it is useful since it is not influenced by extreme values. The spread is the same no matter what the lowest grade is or what the highest grade is, because it just looks at the middle of the data, the middle spread. We can use Excel to calculate the percentiles and quartiles for us by using the following Excel functions. 
For percentiles, we type in equal, which tells Excel that it's a formula, percentile.exc, then the range of the cells, P divided by 100, where P is the percentile. We can use this formula for quartiles by putting in a P of 25, 50, or 75, or we can use the Excel function equal to quartile, where you would type in a 1 or a 2 or a 3 for the quartile value. Let's see how this is done. All right, here we have a spreadsheet with student data, and we have a column with grades on exam. And let's say we want to calculate for this data set uh, the percentiles and quartiles. So let's type in the 25th percentile. Let's use the formula in Excel. So we would type in equal. We would type in percentile. That exc, it comes up there, right? And then we would click, type in the array or the range, and this would be uh, C2 to C51. So we have the range there. Now put a comma. And then we have P divided by 100, so that would be 25 divided by 100, close parentheses, and we get the 25th percentile would be 70.5, okay? Now, let's see if we did that as the quartile formula, and it should give us the same number, right? So let's type in the quartile formula equal to quartile Q-U-A-R-T-I-L-E dot E-X-C. And then we give the array or numbers. Again, it's C2 through C51. And then we do comma and the quartile. And we want the first quartile at the 25th percentile, so just put in a 1 and close it. And we should get the same number that we did using the percentile function. So you can use either of those functions in Excel. You can use percentile or you can use quartiles and you'll get the same number. Let's do the 75th percentile so we can see quartiles too. Uh, so we would type in, if we want to use the percentile formula, we would type in equal, equal percentile dot exc, and then we would put again the range where our data is. So the range is C2 through C51, then comma, and what did we say, the 75th percentile? So that would be 75 divided by 100, and that would give us 87.25. So that means that if you look at all these grades, the uh, 75th percentile would be 87.25. So 75% of the students got below an 87.25, and 25% of the students got above an 87.25. Okay, let's do this as a quartile. So we do equal quartile dot exc. And then we put in the range C2 through C51. That's where my data is. Then comma, and then the quartile. And you can see here it pops up. Put in a one if it's the first quartile, a two if it's the second quartile or the median and three if it's the third quartile we want a three for the third quartile so we put that in three and enter and we get 87.25 so any which way you do it you can use percentiles you can use quartiles but excel will do that for us that concludes this tutorial on percentiles quartiles and the interquartile range and a demonstration of excel i hope you enjoyed and i hope you learned something